Recording. So, yeah, I just want to say welcome, everyone. My name is Angela Mills. I work for the town of Amherst. I want to thank everyone on the Cultural Council for all of their hard work during this election progress process. And um, at this time, just to give everyone a heads up that we are recording to the cloud. And this meeting will be uploaded to the town of Amherst YouTube channel shortly. And I wish everyone a great meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Before we get started, uh, I need to let everyone know that pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may also do so in the following manner. Um, they are able to join uh, and also by uh, recording later. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the AmherstMass.gov website an audio or video transcript or other comprehensive recording of the proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. And now I will take a roll call of everyone that I see here so that we can determine uh, that the audio is working for everyone. Robin. Here. Thank you. Leah. Here. Cody. Here. Christy. Here. Rachel. Here. Matt. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I do not believe we have any new business to get to uh, straight away, Matt, unless you were planning on um, okay. talking about uh, the uh, collaboration with the cultural district, or are we holding that no. for... Hmm? Yeah, I, I think we should hold off until Eleanor can join us since she's been the lead. Absolutely. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't have a chance to read the email. Do we have an anticipated time that she might be able to join? She won't time? be able to join tonight, but she'll be able to join on Thursday. No problem. Got it. Okay. So uh, Thursday or Wednesday? Isn't so Wednesday? that's that's a. A, a good thing to bring up, I would say that um, I'm not quite sure other than I certainly blame myself that we ended up with three meetings this week, which I think is um, a heroic ask of any of us and perhaps not possible. So uh, we would like to provided that we have quorum today and Wednesday uh, to consider dropping the meeting Thursday. Yeah, so uh, let's let's. Uh, tentatively look at, at doing that. Uh, I, I think it was just kind of a, a thing where <laughs> there was the 30th and the first and it seemed like different weeks because it was different months and it's not. Yes, Cody. I have to be right at seven. Three. Yes, and I know where you're going. So uh, yeah. we'll see you over there. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Thank you for making the time. Long night for you. So uh, with that, I, I suggest we pick up where we left off. Um, Rachel, any chance I can get you to volunteer to help us with our, our um, time boxing again this evening? You did such a great job. Awesome. She's ready to go. Okay. So um, I must fully admit that I have not looked at this since we were all last together and I have completely forgotten it. Uh, I'm going to assume you all have your documents so there's really no no need to screen share. We could just call out the, the grants and follow along. And uh, in addition to that- We're still doing seven I, minutes? Sorry, seven hmm? minutes. Are we still doing it, seven it, minutes? Yeah, it will, be, okay. it will be seven minutes, yes. Got it. Um, and I am going to apologize in advance that I'm going to have to at times deal with my dogs like now. Right. Sorry. 
Sorry if you can still hear them outside. All right. <laughs> so we are starting with, um, if you're following on, along in the panel book, it would be page 113, sequence number 13. This is a grant uh, at the Amherst uh, Senior Center, and it will be celebrating the season of the winter holidays. The applicant is David Bates III applying as an individual. And uh, as far as how we all collectively looked at this, it came in as uh, a 3.0. So it had a tremendous amount of support uh, and they are asking for $475. Um, so this program is going to be celebrating the winter holidays, cultural diversity of the New England region. They're bringing in, uh, or the winning performer, David Bates is the, the grantee. And he will have songs and stories designed to educate and entertain uh, and create a feeling of, the, of community. Um, there's a sing-along aspect in carols, Native American stories, family stories, traditional and contemporary New England folk tales. Uh, it'll be about 60 minutes and will be uh, sponsored also by the Amherst Council on Aging. And it is scheduled for uh, next year, Monday, uh, December the 11th. Is this definitely next year or this year? I, I didn't think to check the date, just to be sure. Yeah. Uh, must be next year, because that's a Sunday this year. And uh, there'll also be a video link. Um, so those who can't attend in person will have access and can share on social media for a period up to three months. Um, so the only comment uh, from anyone was, uh, we should be sensitive about the singer having a connection to cultures that they're singing about. I guess this is maybe around appropriation, but it seems to be well-rounded. and. I would say to, to that comment that uh, it, it seems that, you know, this is very respectful of the diversity and trying to respect and include all cultures. So it seems very, very inclusive and, and uh, thoughtful uh, from my perspective. So uh, is, is there anyone who would like to champion and uh, fully fund this event for $475 at the Senior Center? Okay, I would like to. Okay. Excellent. Is there anyone opposed to fully funding it? If we had the funds. Well, as a community member, I personally have heard of David Bates. So I was a little skeptic. Over. Mm -hmm. No, my. Sh sure. So, uh, one of the things we can we can do is go to the panel books, in a case like this, and look at the supporting materials, uh, to see if there's a letter of support. Um, there are some some links to flyers here, and uh, we do have a letter. Uh, from the town of Amherst, uh, signed by Haley Bolton, who's the director of senior services. Uh, basically a letter letter of support. And she says the stories bring warmth to the coldest time of the year while celebrating a variety of holiday traditions. Um, they would not have the budget themselves uh, to do something like this, and but they would value our support to be able to bring this to the community. Um, and it's, it, this is a really nice comment that there's a special focus on elders and their caregiver pairs, you know, so um, the caregivers in particular have some of the, you know, just toughest, most generous and, and physically demanding work at times. So I think this is really, you know, nice that they were able to, to support that. There's several le letters of support here. All right. Yeah, I'm all for it. Okay. 
right. thank you. I, I'm all for it. Is is there any need of any additional discussion from anyone? Julian, I I am also all for it, but I would just like to um, note as we go through these that we have a lot of le similar letters from the senior center, and you know, there's I just you know there's maybe a message. Um, in all these letters of support that they're writing around their level of funding. Um, and I, mm -hmm. I would be curious, and this isn't really, I wouldn't want to apply, you know, punish any one grant applicant on this front, but it mm -hmm. does seem as though we are funding, you know, the bulk of their entertainment um, slate for the year. And of course, there's no better thing, right, for the Cultural Council to do than support, you know, culture for our seniors. No question, I'm not questioning that in any way, but I, I do think it does beg a question around, you know, what the senior center sources of funding are for really vital events like cultural stuff like this. That's that's an excellent point. And to, to that extent that the, in the same way that we I'll get right back to you, Robin, that we're looking at the total assortment of music versus science and culture versus theater versus we, we may have to, you know, assess you know, um, sp specific to certain venues um, and and their assortment, which we could certainly do towards the end. Y yes, Robin. Well, Matt, I had the same like observation. Um, I heard Haley speak about the senior center, and they do not get very much funding from the town at all. They pretty much have to self fund. So it's a, one of those issues, again, where there are other sources of trying to fund things that, you know, we might think the town should be funding, but the town is not funding. So uh, Time's um, up. Sorry. Yeah. It's been up for a little bit. I'm just letting you know. Okay, I think uh, with with this one, I will uh, make a note of these, and we'll have to come come back to it after uh, in the next round. Okay, so the next one after this is um, the. I'm going to say it wrong. Who's going to say it for me correctly? Okay. Oh, you're going to turn your camera off and recuse yourself. Can you can you say the name of the powwow correctly yeah. for me first? Odenong powwow. Odenong powwow. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, so this is to be on the Amherst Town Common, and uh, we're familiar with the work that Justin Beatty and, and everyone involved did last year. And uh, it is a two-day event, May 27th and 28th. They are asking for $7,000 um, and projected to serve 2,500 people. Overall, um, we noted this collectively uh, as, as a three, there's very strong support. Uh, this would be the third an annual Odenong powwow and the first to take place on the Amherst Town Common, um, which to me, that seems really significant and meaningful. Um, this will not be directly affiliated with any of the colleges or universities uh, and it um, will in include indigenous people throughout Western Massachusetts and the surrounding area. And it's, it's open to the public and free of charge. It's over Memorial Day, includes, includes drum groups, dance competition, community dancing, Native American vendors and food and entertainment. Um, and it, it really brings it all together, the music, dance, visual arts, storytelling. Uh, and um, they, the group is intending for this to become an, an annually held event that's not only a staple in Amherst, but is, is a premier Native American oriented event in Western Massachusetts um, and have it become a, really truly a, an event and a destination event that brings people into our region. Uh, 
summing up comments, uh, they, there uh, are a couple folks saying they really want to fully fund this, but it's a big percentage of of, of our our cultural council's total available funds. And um, yeah, th there's another person who says the, the same. So is there anyone who would like to champion fully funding this? <clears throat> Julian, I'll, I'll go ahead and um, be the person. Yeah, I, I, I um, would second that as, as far as I'd like to fully fund it for yeah. the caliber and significance and 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 that um, when you look at where the name of Amherst comes from, how how wonderful that, you know, um, we can kind of turn the tables. Yeah, and I, I just wanted to give one piece of context that newer members may not be aware of, and that's that um, this past year we funded a large percentage on the Odenong. I don't believe it was 100%, but it was a one of our larger grants as well. Um, and due to, I would I would say sort of some pretty very significant miscommunications, uh, they were denied their access to the town common that they had reserved. And we actually had reviewed their paperwork to reserve that common uh, this time last year. Um, and then they were they were denied that access. The town hall did you know did eventually um, turn around and, and say all right, our mistake, you know, you can, you can have it after all, but that was about a week after they were denied and, and they had consulted with their leadership group and, and changed venues and decided to stick with their rain venue, um, which I just, I just want to put that out there because I think what we have this year is, of course, a really good proposal, but there's also a commitment among town manager and other people in, you know, in town hall um, to make sure that this happens on the common as long as it's not raining. Um, so, you know, just just a piece of context that I think folks uh, may not be aware of. Thank you for that, Matt. And I would like to third that um, proposal to fully fund this. Um, go ahead, Christy. Matt, I don't. I mean, that's an awful story. I didn't know that. But how does that affect how we look at the funding? I mean. Oops. Yeah, well, not necessarily, Christy. I mean, I think each person can do what they want with the information, but I, I shared it just because in my mind, it strengthens the application and the, um, the likelihood that it, it will come off this year without a hitch, given that they've got, you know, all the support of the town offices. But I, I you know, I defer to individuals how they want to handle that information. Yeah, yes, I guess Robert. that's just a piece of background information that Matt has provided. I was going to say that um, in the context of our funding, these um, like, okay, so this is a two day event. And um, I guess from, you know, not looking right now at specifically, actually, this is probably the wrong way to put it. But what I was going to say is that um, we're also looking at giving um, a, a some support to the block party, right? That's going to be, is that like a one day event or something? And so I'm just wondering if um, in the context of the entire budget, um, how we want to weigh something like this versus something like that, given the duration, you know, um, I don't know if what I'm saying is relevant to it, what you all consider. It is relevant and I want, yeah. I want to get back to Robin who had a question, but uh, I think at, at this stage, we're really looking at at each grant on its merits. Does it meet our guidelines, uh, you know, and how how strongly we feel about supporting it? You know, we can't balance the budget at the beginning. We have to go through and, you know, see which, which grants can co go forward and then uh, really looking at that total. So, and, and how it all works together and provides benefit. Robin? I, I just want to say that I, and I, I actually said this last year, at least privately, that um, for me, I would support fully funding it for many, many reasons. Uh, I just don't know that we can really do that since there are others. But for me, it's as much as we can provide for this for so many reasons. Was that the time box, Rachel? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I think that's the sentiment we probably all fully would support fully and we'll have to reconcile it and yeah 
and so on. So that I don't go over, but uh, <laughs> uh, the, the next um, event is uh, being applied for by Rosemary Kane, and it is the Margaret Maher and the collection of Emily Dickinson. It's an opera musical that will be held uh, this weekend, December 3rd and 4th at Hawks and Reeds uh, in Greenfield. Uh, they are asking us for $500 and say it will serve about 200 people. It's original music, narration, and drama telling the story of Margaret Maher, an Irish servant in the Dickinson household. Uh, she saved Emily Dickinson's poems from the flames, um, following a promise to Emily to her death that she'd burn them. Hmm. And she thought better of burning them. And in the trunk of poems, uh, they also had the only uh, adult Emily image of Emily Dickinson. So um, it, the comments were, um, love the work and appreciate the uh, amount of her ask versus the overall funding. So what, $6,900 total uh, budget, you know, asking us 500. Um, and the tickets- uh, 22. Don't, hmm? $22. Yeah, the the tickets, but it's really interesting town culture, uh, and and also that it's in Greenfield. Uh, but overall, it it was a three overall from the group. So, uh, is there anyone who champions fully funding this? Sorry, I'm not looking at my screen if people are raising their hands. And Cody, thanks for finding your way back. I feel like with the distance things, it gets complicated with fully funding because this is such a small amount. So I feel like we could afford to fully fund it, but then looking at another thing that's in Greenfield that might be asking for like a thousand, we'd want to like mm -hmm. fund half. So I don't know whether to think about funding um, like distant events as like up to five hundred dollars or like up to like fifty percent. Excuse me. Let me correct myself. It wasn't a three point oh. It was a two point one four. So I I, I think uh, I was got, I have too many tabs open. So I think from that that there there really isn't necessarily the support from the group to fully fund. Yes, Cody. Yeah. Oh, so dirty cough. You know most of us say it won't take a person's in bad but for some it is so I see it not as accessible to everyone so that in the distance also, I was in be in, in the museum in her house here so it's just weird. It would be so nice in the museum. When is the museum opening again? Does anyone, we have that in here somewhere. So I, it, it might have been a decision. I don't think they're open now, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure they are. I'll double check. Yeah. Uh, it might also be that it, you know, the museum, as far as accommodating that that many people in one spot, you know. So, were you saying that you don't believe that Hawks and Reed is is accessible, ADA accessible, Cody? No, I'm saying financially for everyone, twenty two oh. bucks, maybe a little. Mm -hmm. 
so are folks thinking in terms of, you know, partially funding and um, certainly it seems like we should support something like this, but it certainly doesn't fall to us to necessarily have to fully fund it. I'm, I'm sorry, I missed my notes for 50%. percent mm hmm I'd support 50%, certainly. I'd, I'd support 50%. Thank you. Matt, what, what were you saying? Well, you know, I would support 50% as well, but I, I was, I, maybe I missed the rationale behind, uh, for me, the 6,900 overall budget for a pretty big production. Um, I thought 500 was a, was a reasonable um, funding level to come in at with for us. And since it is, uh, you know, uh, we are for better or worse, the, you know, the umbrella organization for all things, Emily Dickinson. Um, but I, I mean, I, 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 I take the point that we don't want to fully fund it, but, but to me, it seemed like a reasonable ask for us, given, you know, our role and relationship. Yeah, I'd, I'd easily go 300 or 350 if we have it, especially for an original work and related to Emily Dickinson that should provide more traffic, you know, to the museum and therefore to our town and our businesses. Is there anyone that would oppose being at 350 if we had that? I can't hear anyone. If you... Yeah, thank you. Okay, how are we for time, Rachel? We have 30 seconds left. All right, any other comments? Moving on, our next grant um, is from the uh, Charlemont Forum. Uh, this is for the summer speaker series coming up this summer. This is a humanities um, focused uh, series and um, they estimate they'll be serving 400 people. And uh, as far as overall support, um, lost my place again. Um, we were uh, at 2.57, so pretty pretty strong support here. So uh, what this is about is um, the forum offers two events in the summer. One is about um, immigration and uh, pressures in the U.S. response uh, to the southern border. Uh, they're bringing in Tyler Moran to present uh, an overview of complex, nuanced issues pressuring immigration from Latin America and uh, the U.S.'s current uh, policy response. And then the next presentation is about climate and migration and who's impacted, uh, looking forward to future temperatures, drought, rising sea levels, and the population shifts that uh, could come in uh, decades uh, in the future. This is going to be presented by uh, Dr. Alex de Sherbinen, and um, he's going to look at this, um, both how it will play out in Europe and the US, uh, and the folks um, that will be impacted by climate change and have to seek economic survival beyond their villages, towns, and countries. So this is a, you know, a nice kind of a different, different type of uh, event um, that is serving a larger global need. Is there anyone who champions fully funding this? Robin, thank you. I also would support fully funding it. I would too. Sir. All right, are we all in favor if we can? Thank you, okay. So with that, we will go ahead and move on. I have a quick uh, question related to this, Julianne. Yeah. Um, so for like events like this one, I had in my notes that um, because of the the format of the presentations, um, if we wanted to, I don't think I saw anything specifically about, for example, um, interpretation or ASL, but I, I suppose there's closed captioning, right? Because I'm just saying if they're specific like accessibility, um, considerations, would we have funds to um, give them uh, money yeah. to support those? Right. Ra did, Rachel, I can um, speak to that quick, just because we, we did set it up for them two years ago and worked through the Commission of the Definite. So that's a good question. I don't have an answer to your question, but just 
um, context is that they were they were all about it two years ago <clears throat> when we were offering a lot of direct assistance for it. And I don't have their I don't have the budget from their panel book right in front of me this second to to say whether they set aside money this year or not. But we we did not offer and, and are not currently planning. I don't think to put additional monies towards those supports. We we're asking our grantee our applicants to wrap those supports into their budget request. Okay, I didn't it see is, anything. It is not I don't in think the I saw anything no. particularly, like specifically addressing that. That's probably why I asked the question. Um, but thank it, you, Matt. Would there be a way to work with the MCC? So, like a portion of the part that you have to review, like not just in the guidelines, but as a section. Like, how are you going to be? Is this project like, um, and like list our accessibility needs, and then have them do like a one or two sentence response? That should have been in the grant itself. I'm looking at the questions and looking for where it should be. Yeah, and yeah unfortunately, yeah, that's a good question. I, but unfortunately, the um, with 400 or so municipal councils, I yeah. do not think they're going to let us customize that that platform. No, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But I, yeah, because I feel like if it was like there, then it's like, like I feel like when it's in the guidelines, like I, I don't know. I feel like that would be maybe a way to improve people thinking about that and putting it in the budget. But I think that would be a lot more work where we'd really have to like meet with the MCC and talk about that. But like that could be a future goal. Yeah, I don't, I, I, we have nothing in the budget and nothing specific that I can see skimming. Um, but the one thing we could do, Leah, is we could recommend to them that that goes into their template for all, yeah. for all LCC. Yeah, because I mean, then it's like improving. I mean, I mean, that's the best outcome for that. But I don't know if that's a complicated process. I, I do think that we had a call to action for people to really spell out how they were going to accommodate people. And yet it's it's not really prompted. Yeah. They would have to just put it in, in the lines of text that they're putting in. So it'd be nice to be able to, to be, uh, have it be an item that can't be missed, you know, can't exactly. be skipped. Yeah. Uh, I know this is a lot of but not really that question about accessibility. Maybe we need to say like ASL into or PCAs that way it clips all the mean accessibility in this way. We kind of do that and then we kind of don't do that because there's a, a blanket ADA accessibility that must be there for the actual location of the event. And then the accessibility um, topic that we're talking about now has to do with expanding beyond that to be even more inclusive that um, and we're asking grantees to really think about how somebody can you know, participate in an event like this if they can't hear the speaker speaking. Uh, so there, there are two levels. There's, there's the first level that's absolutely required period for ADA physical accessibility, to, and then a second level that um, we encourage, and we're at time that's um, more more on a on a on a voluntary um, proactive basis. Um, yes, but we'd we'd like to see people speak to that. Thank you, Rachel. Okay. If so there's I'm a marking... ringtone that you all prefer to hear to listen to, just let me know. <laughs> Oh, I, I haven't heard your ringtone. I, I, I have to be looking for you to wave. Was I supposed to be looking? Okay, let, let's keep moving on. This, um, this next one is uh, called uh, Magic for, I keep losing my spot, folks. I've lost the magic. All right, I'll get it back though, I promise. Um, 
Magic for Seniors and Families. It's uh, April 17th, 2023. Again, it's at the Bangs Community Center. Um, this is Edward Cope Jr., who is applying as an individual. And um, this is a ma magic performance that's usually uh, geared toward the understanding level of seniors. Um, this event will be open to seniors and their families during April vacation week filled with comedy and suspense. suspense. Uh, volunteers of all ages will help perform magic routines from mind reading uh, to coins to cards and there'll be something for all ages. So they are asking for uh, their total budget from us of $450 and serving approximately 45 people. Um, is there uh, anyone who champions fully funding this? I'm champion. Okay, thank you. And you as well, Robin? Yeah. <laughs> um, is there anyone who is opposed to fully funding? Again, this would be if we have <coughs> the funds and this may fall under the umbrella of how many senior center uh, projects can we do in total? Uh, I'm we... not sure this is at the senior center though. It says bank. It's at the bank center. Probably the senior center, but it's not. Well, maybe additional material. Uh, Is that not what they mean by the Bangs Community Center in this case? And it's magic for seniors? I think that was one of the ones with the supporting letter, wasn't it? That is a good point. Uh, yeah, I can't quite get the supporting letter open. But I'm looking right now. Uh, yes, it probably, yeah. Uh, I had to download it. If the clues add up to Senior Center. Mm -hmm. um, it is at the Amherst Senior Center. Yes. I, you know, I, I fully support this project too. But just, um, I do think at the end we may, when we're balancing the budget, we may want to go through and look at all the senior projects and potential. You know, we do have that. We do have that statement around looking for a diversity of grants. Um, and I, you know, so I, I, it's just something to bear in mind. But I, I mean, I support this, of course, as a as a project yeah. generally. I, I'm, I'm beginning to you know track with this as well. And they're all coming in, interestingly, at about the same you know, stipend for an individual, which I would say is a bit on the high side uh, at times. I mean, would, would, well, it would be worth it at some point to go through and look at what our average um, stipend value is across the board what's the high what's the low what what would be <clears throat> normal not that you know everybody should get the same but um that's my comment any other comments on this just that if we're going to be funding let's say you know there's like what five or six mm -hmm. applications this round um that um relate to activities and programs in at the senior center and I think almost all of them came with a letter of support, right, from the programming person. Exactly. There. So, so I guess at the end, what we could do is just maybe, you know, make it uh, look at the group and then decide, okay, we'll give so much to each, like based with a hopefully somewhat equitable basis, um, whatever we determine that to be towards the end. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it is something to think about that if, you know, one group is, we only let, you know, one person apply and when you have you know this is certainly meets our guidelines to have um multiple letters of support but at a certain point they also should kind of curate which uh programs they're they're supporting if and and champion championing themselves right that's an interesting point because if our our policy is that um you know one individual one group may launch or submit one application we're not limiting it to one venue may only support mm -hmm. application, right because that's essentially what's happening here isn't it yeah any other discussion here i have a comment and mm -hmm. then and then oh my 
Well, we just won't do it if we don't get pardons. Oh, yes. They may be, I hate to say this, but testing the world. Well, how much can we get? Yeah, so there's actually a question to that in the application, and here's their answer. Uh, how will you adjust the project if the council, council cannot fund the entire amount you are requesting? And uh, their response is partial funding has never affected any of the energy or presentations required to present to your community a professional performance. I cannot adjust my program to give a partial performance I always give 100%. So in, in in this case, it seems like this particular artist is saying, hey, if I can't get the whole amount, I'm not coming. Um, personally, I find that a little little disappointing. And um, this is not going to work with our, our time boxing, but to go back to David Bates III, um, his response was um, to the same question. If it's needed, it's possible to cut back on publicity cost, equipment expenses, and stipend amounts for the series curate, curator. My priority is paying uh, the poets a fair stipend for their participation in reading. So in the past, when we've uh, had to you know, really kind of balance the budget, and, and uh, we certainly appreciate someone who's willing to bring culture uh, to the community at, at with the funds that are available and um, I for one myself would give weight to the other applicant based on their willingness to be flexible uh, versus one who if I read that correctly said you know yeah. if I can't get a hundred percent I can't give a hundred percent so yes Rachel hi thank you um, okay Wait, can so, I ask a quick clarifying question? Are the events at the Senior Center open to the Amherst public? And if so, is there usually Amherst public that comes to them too? Or is it usually mostly senior population? I believe it's usually mostly senior population. Right. Robin, you probably know more about it's it. It's definitely open to everybody. And I think part of this is they're saying, oh, you know, bring your grandkids and yeah others and whatever i think they're trying to okay. bring in more people to the senior center and 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 more more different types of programs and all sorts of other stuff but it's always open as far as i know yeah it, it did say that it was open uh it's uh no cost to families uh and uh, okay, so moving on to the next grant, uh, the name of the, the uh, grant applicant is Dear Ella, I think, and this is Music for Education and Joy. Um, they're citing that this would be in, in around the Amherst community, and they're asking for, they have a total budget of 1,000, of which they are asking for, for 1,000. This is a uh, Dear Ella is a trio that's bringing their program music for education and joy to people of all ages, playing for nonprofit schools, etc. Um, and they support social justice causes, inclusion, and they uh, play a style of folk swing and blues and soul music, uh, along with some sing along uh, music history and dancing. There's some lectures and demonstrations that will be streamed. Um, and uh they will work with all cultures races genders and tailor their program to to fit spreading hope through music to every audience annie patterson um and mary witt and annie percival um they all love singing three-part harmony and um the music they feel will bring uh, the community together and they bring years of performing experience so uh, the comments that we had here were there's there's no date or location. Um, they're charging ten to twenty dollars 
uh, for for tickets. Um, and I think there was maybe a comment about the sliding scale and not being clear how how that works. Um, at this point, when we're looking at no date and no location, no can no, uh, I, it doesn't meet our uh, our guidelines as far as I can tell. Is there is there anyone who su supports this um, and believes it does meet our guidelines? I have half of that. It doesn't meet our guidelines, which is very disappointing because this would be an, an amazing event. I mean, these are three amazing singers who do wonderful, wonderful performances, but there's no date and there's no venue. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and, and it's a little concerning too, because they're applying to us and we ask if you if they applied to any other councils and they'd said they'd like to apply to other councils but yeah. it doesn't list that they did yeah um um okay so no one supports that this meets our guidelines at this point anyway, no. then uh, I, I believe we have to let this this one go. Sadly. Hmm? Just sadly, because it would be really, they are amazing, but not performing yeah. anywhere doesn't help us. So. Yeah, yeah. I, it, especially with our direct granting, you know, it, it might have been one thing under the old reimbursement model, but with direct granting, you know, we, we really do need to do our due diligence to see that, you know, the event will uh, occur and could be successful where it will occur and that it, it will also be accessible where it occurs. So, okay, if there are no other comments. No. Okay. Thank you. Sadly. Um, the next one is a music telling series. Uh, by Eli Elkus. Um, it has uh, quite a, a long uh, date range starting in July of 2022 to October of 2023. I think that might be a typo. It's probably all in 2023. I don't think so. Um, okay. Uh, well, I don't know. Let's see. So it's, it's at the Amherst Farmers Market. They're asking for um, uh, one thousand five hundred ten dollars, um, and plan to serve uh, one thousand two hundred fifty people. So um, it's it's free folk music, um, along with a series of songs and stories performed at the farmers market on the town common. Um, it's five three hour performances. Two of the performances have already taken place and were a great success. Uh, <laughs> July and October um, of uh, 2022. And these are sets of their original works and interpretations of old folk, blues, gospel songs, which are carefully curated for diverse audiences. They're looking uh, forward to rekindling and reinventing things like this train, uh, a song about race and inequality. Um, for younger listeners, uh, things like Teddy Bear's Picnic and more American folk songs. Um, and uh, to get to our, our comments, um, one person said uh, they supported partial funding. Uh, someone else said that it seems like a pretty low number of performances. Um, and uh, another person said, wow, it's a really large um, ask as far as how much they're asking for. And we had this at a 1.64. So um, I guess to, to start the conversation um, from at a 1.64, I, I don't think we're looking at fully funding it. Um, who champions uh, partially funding this? Yeah. 
I would champion partially funding it. I think some of the the performance at the farmers market has has been an, an ongoing, and I, I believe that it really does draw children and, and families out and and supports community. But I would I would only support somewhat small funding amount. Is that a question, Cody? Yeah. Yes. I'm just saying, like. And you guys know more than me. I'm just a nervous that we could see what we all see at the sea center is a more by more out. Vacations also is the, well, they also have vendor fees. So, why can't they pay out of that? I'm just being cautious. About it. How do we want to be cautious? Sorry. No, I guess my head is that. Well, will they constantly apply for different people? Or, or, or they, and will they be pretty? All right, what's the number of funding requests? Well, we, we do have in our, our, our guidelines, and this is something that is kind of harder to do up front, but at the end, um, we now have in our guidelines that we can assure to, that we spread the, the, the funding around to assure that we have different kinds of events at different locations, um, that it's not all music and, and within music, that it's, it's not all acapella, you know, that, so we will be able to go back and say, hey, we support this, but let's look at how many of these kinds of things we have where they're happening and make sure that there's uh there there are different things for people to do not not just the same thing in the same spot for the same audience so yes right. we can absolutely do that yeah. um and one of the so, things i liked about this specifically is it's very public it's very open like it's in the town commons it feels accessible i think it was free and that stood out to me and a lot of the music grants mm -hmm. I'm sorry if I'm back and forth if someone's raising their hand. Yes, um, Robin. So we do fund, there's at least one other person who, maybe even two, who we fund to perform at the farmer's market. And so I would just like if we, to make sure we're not, they're somewhat equivalent in what we pay, that there isn't this huge difference in that. And I, I don't think there's any way to do the, the full funding on, on this. Uh, and, he you know, I, I understand. Support though, remember? It got sent. Well, they, they do, but that, that I think speaks more to the number of people who are attending the, the farmer's market, you know, as far as their quality time engaging with this, um, I, I think it's, you know, not every person and, and certainly I respect that the performer is is doing five, three hour performances. That's a lot of time, you know, so the, the ask isn't, you know, outrageous from that, that perspective, but as far as um, uh, community benefit for how much time the, these community members are actively engaged with it it's it's perhaps not the same as someone who's going specifically to attend just a performance yes rachel 
I was just going to say time is up, but I was also going to say that in my notes, I had put down that maybe we can support in terms of money, like one of the- I'm sorry, I had some background noise. Could you say that again? I was just saying that um, I had in my notes, time is, is up, but I, I had in my notes that maybe we can support one of those five sessions in terms of the, you know, like the amount. Yeah. The total. Uh, so I, I would like be right there with you. So yeah, the possibly 300 would take care of, you know, one of those. Okay, um, move, moving on. Bless you, Rachel. Uh, the next is um, being applied for empowerment through the arts, and they, it is lifting all voices, arts and theater, amplifying and empowering. This runs February uh, through April, and it is at the um, EE. What, ETDA Arts Office um, and Craig's Door Shelters. Uh, they are asking for $2,030 to serve 200 people. And um, overall for this, um, our, our support was uh, overall 1.36. And um, I think I'm going to switch and start doing some of, some of the comments before I, I go into the description. So, um, I, one of the concerns was just a very large ask, um, and another comment was not full. I don't know what not full means. Um, another said that it makes culture possible for people in dire, dire circumstances, gives them dignity, inspirational. Um, moments and a human connection. So what they're doing is over 10 weeks, uh, this group will be holding classes uh, for folks with housing instability. So it takes place uh, at um, Amherst Community Connections and then um, supporting people who are getting rehoused and at Craig's Door Shelters to those who are experiencing homelessness in the winter months. Um, they are able to uh, express themselves uh, through arts and theater uh, with the rainbow players. And um, this is an expressive outlet uh, that's often not open to them. And the sessions will be once a week, providing two choices, either to explore theater uh, improv forms or visual arts through paint, play, collage, and mask making. and. Um, at the Craig's doors, the participants have a different option with uh, visual arts and theater and perhaps cabaret open mic in the evening held each week with the rainbow players. So um, is there anyone who champions this particular uh, event? I champion it. I'm I'm dancing in its yeah, special for the whole population provides a sense of community. It helps a lot. Thank you. Other comments? I, I also champion it in spirit and, and yet um, have some concerns that, uh, well, it is local to here uh, that <clears throat> we are, we're the only only group um, that they applied to at all and that we are the entire budget. Um, so I'm curious what would happen if uh, we, we didn't fund it since all the eggs are in, are in our basket here. Um, and what they are saying is um, if they're not fully funded, they might need to reduce the number of weeks. Um, and, 
they would reach out um, to a support network for added support. So I think, you know, the reality very well may be that considering how much is of our, of our total budget, we can't fully support it. And it sounds like they recognize that they would need to, to get additional support and would be willing to do so. Any other comments? I basically feel the same way you do. It sounds wonderful and great. I question the ability to pull it off. There's not a lot of information yeah. about that. And is there, is there any reason that we feel that there's like a nexus where these folks should have applied to other cultural councils? Um, yeah. Hmm. It just seems like it's a lot of coordinating between different groups and mm -hmm. not, I don't have a lot of confidence in that being able to happen. It just so it's not presented in a way that it looks like, I don't know, I, it just, I also can't open the additional material. So, you know, that might say, yes, we, we work together and we'll be able to do it, but I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's great. I think there's, if something like this can happen, it would be great. I just somehow, I'm not convinced it can happen. Okay. Is, is there a number that you think is appropriate for partial funding? I don't know if she can do it in partial funding. Um, that's kind of part of it. Um, so can I, um, I would just ask, I don't recognize this group from previous years. Does anybody, does anybody else? Well, well, Linda Sell, we have given grant to, but not as this group. So I don't know anything about them. I'm currently I, I do think it's, I think it's an ambitious, I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I think it's really no, a great project that is fairly ambitious and it is a fairly large ask. And it's the kind of thing that, I don't know. I mean, we may want to come back to, I had it as a firm too. In other words, yes, I'd like to fund it. No, I'm not going to advocate for full funding, but it's also one of these ones that, you know, maybe a little bit of seed funding to see if they can get something started and get the ball rolling. Um, this year might be wise, but I, I'm actually going to go back and look at some of the supporting materials because I, I don't have it at the tip of my tongue either. Yeah, and, and looking at this, not, sorry, Rachel, not only to pull it off, but also to have the, the qualifications to to work with people that are in crisis. Um, you know, it's it's something, you know, that I'd, I'd like to see, you know, some some credentials that that go along with supporting um, that that it's not just passion, but there there's a skill set there that is uh, going to truly address being supportive, um, no matter what's coming up. Rachel, yes. Just the time's up. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, really appreciate everybody's com comments there. So next um, at the Jones Public Library, we have uh, Rhonda Fazio, who would like to bring Dying to Wear It, Creating Community Through Color in spring of 2023. Um, she's requesting $600 to serve uh, about 20 folks. And um, our support for this overall uh, was a 2.21 and um, it's basically an interactive creative workshop focused on design and function of, of a classical silk scarf. Participants will work side by side with the artist and create their own unique piece of wearable art using natural dyes, ancient techniques. Um, and uh, there'll be a discussion with the artist uh, about the origins of natural resources. Um, 
connecting um, culture and diversity through storytelling of, of our shared American history. And they'll be encouraged to share their stories about the region's textile history during class. And uh, there'll also be a demonstration of how to wear the scarf at the end of class. So comments around this. Um, one person said that um, there's there's no way to fund the seventy five dollars worth of travel, so um, we couldn't. Uh, we have to be careful to not fund fund that, and that is a unique event. Um, is there uh, anyone who champions fully funding this? Okay. Um, is there anyone who champions this at all? I I support it in that um, it does bring some unique experiences. Uh, that it is interactive. That it is encouraging people to learn uh, a new way to not only make art but to also wear it within the community and 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 tell stories. Uh, when they're asked about where did this come from, um, I think it does serve a small number of people. Um, although you know, textile art is some of the earliest and most en en enduring art of of human culture. I do think it's a little ambitious, and as someone who's um, made silk scarves in academic um, uh, institutions, like I, I, I don't fully understand the how and where all of this can really happen um, for a, a sizable group of people and with just one session. Uh, that, that would be my concern is um, just will people really come out of this uh, with with all they're intending to do here. Any other comments? Nope. I'm the only one who finds this mildly interesting. I, I find it interesting and that is textiles, which is a lot more important than people realize in terms of culture and history and all sorts of stuff. I'm just not sure this, I, I'm not sure what this is actually. I mean, who would participate? How people would get to it? Um, and just, I, I, I personally money. thought this one was great. I, oh, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Robin, I didn't hear No, and does it, the amount of money make sense? Otherwise, um, it, I think it could be fun, but I'm not sure about funding it. I'm, I'm, I'm not clear what it is entirely, so. Well, it does remind me of some of the um, uh, knitting workshops that we uh, funded a couple of years ago. And uh, I think stuff like this is very inclusive and, and community-based and, um, you know, some people who might be intimidated by more traditional art might be interested in coming to weaving class. We're talking about the weaving class at the Jones? This is, uh, no, it's more like a surface design for a silk scarf. Sorry, I may have simplified it in my own mind into a weaving class at the Jones. <laughs> mm hmm mm hmm I mean, uh, I, I, sorry. Yes. I, I was just gonna say, does it kind of fall in the same category as applications we've gotten in the past was like, I want to run a painting class for 12 people. There's no cost to participate, I believe. For this one. For this, um, this one, there's, and it's, right. at the, it's at a public location at the library and it's open okay. to- Okay, but I, supp I suppose, yes, I, I okay. But I, I guess I was still, I have some questions about the so-called public benefit of something like this. That's, um, I mean, yes, there's in, 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 principle there it's you know members of the public can participate um for something like this you know i look at it and it really would it's it's ambitious to have 20 people doing this you know um especially given given the space and and time and materials and everything else i mean i i think it's a tremendous amount of value if you can have 
I'm not saying that we necessarily can fully fund it, but if 20 people, you know, actually go and, and make some sort of um, wearable art, um, that's, that, there's some value there. And it, it's yeah. at no cost to them. It, it, I mean, it does remind me of the, um, we, we had a, a fairly popular um, knitting grant a couple of years ago that we ran and she did a series of workshops around it. But I personally, I, I like it because it's, um, you know, it's, it's very user involved and mm -hmm. it is a low number of participants. And I agree that we probably don't need to fully fund it, but I, I certainly think we should give it some support. And, and I think anything that, you know, is not just a passive audience, uh, participate, you know, it, it's a participatory, a participatory thing, I, I think is, um, is nice. So I, I'm with you, Julian, I, I definitely support um, funding it at 50% or more. Yeah. Um, I, I, yes. Thank you, uh, Yeah. I'm a huge fan of interactive workshops. Mm -hmm. So I definitely was that. On yeah. that, I would support percent or less, um, <laughs> definitely not for. Yeah, I, I think with it being here in Amherst, you know, ab absolutely, I'd like to do 50% uh, and like Matt, perhaps more. So um, I think it's worth, you know, at this point, putting it in at 50% and, you know, none of this is final. And um, in, in past years, we've looked uh, back to say, well, which, which of these events really are in Amherst? Time, Rachel? Yeah. Um, so, so that can be a de deciding factor about, you know, which, which ones go, uh, we give a little more to or a little less. Thank you. Um, moving on to the, to the next one, uh, we have another event at the Jones Library. This is Carrie Ferguson and the Grumpy Time Club Band. Uh, this will be February 24th at the Jones Library. They're requesting uh, $550. Um, it's interactive music concert uh, for children and families. Um, it's in one of the large accessible meeting rooms. It's in the morning during a school break week. Um, and the band is a red and gold four to five piece band, um, which includes musician, musicians and costume dancers. They play original music from Carrie's award-winning album, The Grumpy Time Club. And they do some covers of some uh, tunes and they're just uplifting and funky pop danceable uh, music sets. So they work in themes of um, LGBTQ, uh, family pride, earth stewardship, love of nature, social justice, uh, inclusivity and self-esteem and uh, social emotional learning. Um, there, there was a comment that it's a large stipend for one event, but it sounds like it's multiple folks who are um, splitting that stipend that have to, to look. Overall, um, we gave this a let me make sure I'm on the a 2.5 so it was it was pretty well supported um so with that is there anyone who uh supports fully funding this yes robin we do. i support fully funding it i don't think it's a lot uh, yeah. yeah okay any any further discussion Sorry, I'm making notes, so I'm not looking if anybody's. Okay, so we're good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds like fun. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so moving to the next, um, Andrew Friedman uh, has his flow at the Amherst Farmers Market. Um, the uh, this is occurring. Um, uh, over three dates, one in May, one in June, one in July, 
and requesting $300 for the series. And um, it's three two hour events. Um, folks are going to receive an intro to flow arts. Instructors will be available for the different apparatus and participants will get to try props from different movement disciplines. Um, they can come on a drop in basis and stay for as long as they want. Flow arts are multi multidisciplinary performance arts that combine dance, circus arts, multicultural movement practices and cultures ranging from Africa to, South, to the South Pacific. Um, as far as comments here, we had one person who was slightly confused by the description. Um, another person said it's different and no doubt will be interesting um, for those participating and watching and that it's roughly 50 an hour and someone else questioned if this is circle circus and martial arts and said that it would definitely benefit the community and um this had had a 2.5 for support um so is there anyone who supports um quit jumping around here potentially fully funding the 300 dollars request Thank you, Christy. Yeah. Sorry, I, I sorry, I, I fully I support fully funding this night. I thought we were talking about this one when I voted for fully funding the last one. I didn't want it to. So sorry. I'm sorry, you thought what now? I thought the last one we were talking about was this one because I think I was looking at my clock. So I do fully uh, I do support fully funding this one, but not the previous one because I put my hand up for that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. They're they're both, you know in Amherst and not not a crazy ask so I think we're, we're still good okay I think if we're if we don't have anyone who objects to funding this then we can move on good thank you okay and uh then we have the friends of the Mount Holyoke range um they have their summer summit house sunset concert series it runs uh, July through August at Skinner State Park in Hadley. They're asking us for $600 and expect to serve about 600 people. Um, it's a nonprofit group, promotes land conservation and nature awareness uh, through uh, with groups like the Kestrel Land Trust. And they sponsor nature walks and talks as well as a 5K run. This is a beloved ongoing summer uh, concert series and they work with the Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation. Um, and uh, it supports the Mount Holyoke Summit House and the equipment um, needs of Skinner State Park. And as part of the cultural mission, um, they present five all volunteer run summer concerts and by musicians based in Western New England to highlight uh, the mountain range historic summit, summit house Skinner State Park and support um, of the goal is to support uh, local nature and preservation and our overall scoring for this um, was a 2.14 and the comments were um, it's a great series it's diverse uh, it has diverse funding resources Another person said we might uh, need to adjust for just the total of music. Um, another person said it's uh, $15 per, per ticket. Um, so I, I would add that I didn't capture this the first time I, I went through, but my, I think I'm understanding this correctly, that it's actually a fundraiser to support having the, the, the park and uh, support um, having natural areas to, to go to, as well as uh, maintaining this uh, Mount Holyoke Summit house. Um, so with, with that, is there anyone who supports, um, I guess we'll start with, with fully funding this. I will support it. I will really fascinate it. But this is, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. And yeah, yeah, okay. My, my only reservation would just be 
you know, total total budget for 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 music. But I, I think it's uh, it's it's pretty amazing, and and it, it it brings culture and and supports so much more than than music here, uh, and 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 the preservation of something that's a community treasure. So. Um, Okay, moving on to the next. This is another for the uh, Emmer Senior Center. Uh, Sean Fullerton is uh, going to present Acoustic Memories. It's one, one performance date in April, um, and he's requesting $250. Uh, expects to serve 50 people, and um, he will have songs that cover a, a variety of musical genres acoustic guitar accompanied by vocals and harmonica um, whenever he's allowed to perform without a mask. Hopefully we're uh, assured of that in 2023. And um, one uh, person asked if it's open to more than just the senior center. I guess there was a concern as to whether um, uh, it's really open to the community, I believe. It, it is, but certainly marketed towards the seniors. And our overall score for this was uh, 2.5. Is there anyone who supports fully funding this? I, I, I would say I support fully funding this and that it's, it is one of the lower stipends, yeah. Um, yeah. but we'll have to certainly go back and look at everything for the senior center. Um, but as far as, you know, one of the more reasonable asks I have, you know, this seems like there's no, no reason not to do it. I will wait till we go back and review all of the scenes and because I don't no. Yeah. So just take it for granted that anything that we're deliberating right now, um, nothing here is final for anything. Right. And that, mm -hmm. you know, we will specifically go back and look at these these different uh, um, locations or, or um, styles of, of events. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Good point. So moving on uh, to the next. Um, just a second. I want to be sure that I haven't lost my place. I have not. Okay. So um, the the next is yeah. Shelvin. I'm going to butcher this name. Last name Gabriel and yeah. Shelvin Yana. I hope. Uh, sorry if not. When you get this on the recording, this is creative resilience dialogues and disruption. It's uh, planned for spring of 2023 and likely to be the third week of April. It's likely to be at Hampshire College. They are asking for $2,000. Uh, and our overall support for this was a 1.36. Um, so, uh, this is a series of workshops for community engagement of art presentations. Um, excuse me. If you if you must know why I jump up, they are absolutely destroying my back door. <laughs> Trying to get in. I am. Apologies. Um, so could to sum up their project um, is to help fund a creative resilience conference at, at Hampshire College where one weekend day will be open to the public for both panel discussions about resilience and artistic practice and disrupting system, uh, I think it means systemic oppression. Um, as well as a series of facilitated dialogues and, a, and an exhibit and then they'll also have recorded elements of the program to provide to those who cannot attend as well as a virtual dialogue option. So the comments for this um, were it's a powerful project it's a very it's a limited audience for the funding level requested another person 
said that it lacks public benefit since it focuses on Amherst College, on Hampshire College, excuse me. Another said they're unsure about the specifics of, of that, but they liked that it was free. And another person said that it is a low number served. So um, I, I think realistically, there's there's probably no way to discuss fully funding this. Is there anyone who, who champions this and would like to speak to it? There's no one who only fund because I like the goals the conference has. I'm, I'm sorry. Could could you say that again, Cody? I, I didn't. No answer. I will support Porsche or the funding. Okay. And and what do you think is important specifically? Huh? Uh, uh, I mean, community will. And create this as a form of dialogue. Thank you. Yeah, creative expression and that it's you know something people can participate in is is fantastic. Um, I have some reservations as to whether this meets our guidelines because. Um, it's suggesting that it's at Hampshire College and it's um, that it might be and, and and it doesn't have a date and I'm looking here to see um, I'm looking for a letter of support. Um, and I, I'm really not seeing any of the supporting material did anyone see anything that I might be missing. So I, I am concerned that it doesn't currently meet our guidelines, um, especially under the, the direct granting, is is there anyone else who shares that concern? Christy does. I'm sorry, did you say something, Robin? Yeah, I share too. There's no real time. There's no real place. It's a very low number of people. It's not clear to me. I mean, it sounds like there's this great idea. Let's develop this conference. But, yeah. it, but you know, I'm also concerned. I'm sorry, I've got a lot of background noise here. I'm also concerned that I believe I'm seeing information about the the organizer, but not the other folks that will be participating. This seems like a pretty large event. Um, there is a, a list of several people, but I, I think I only have one one CV. Right. And yeah, I have to agree. Yes, um, just like here, the, sum the summary indicates Hampshire, but there's no letter of support. And then the um, panel book indicates, you know, possibly at Hampshire College, possibly, you know, over a certain season. So I, I do think that, you know, this is right on the cusp of even being an eligible grant. I, I, I think so too. Sadly, I mean, I, I think it is interesting, but we really can't fund something where there's there's nothing to support that it actually um, is is scheduled to occur. Okay. Um, at, at this point, we we are at seven thirty. I believe I see uh, Cody headed to hockey. I'm guessing yeah. correctly. Yep. Yeah. Um. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Um. I think we we made solid progress today. I don't know if anyone kept count of, of how many we've progressed through, but I think we're getting into to a rhythm and doing well. And um. Um. 
we can conclude with, you know, ideally we'll, we'll get, have a quorum on Wednesday and cancel Thursday. Is there anything else uh, that we have to, to add at this point tonight? Yes, Rachel? Just wave and Nothing, time's by. up, that's all. <laughs> See ya. Thank you. All good? I really appreciate everyone being here. I appreciate all the, all the comments and insights and um, I, I think uh, we can keep making good project progress. I'm toast, by the way. So, um, I'm very tired. <laughs> good night, everybody. Um, Great job, Julian. Good night. Great job. Thank you. Look forward to doing this again with you Wednesday, but not Thursday. Thanks. So we're doing Wednesday. Not yeah. Well, we're, it's all TBD, but yeah, I, I think we'll be able to cancel Thursday. So I've got to run. Thanks. Thanks.